Hello and welcome to this GCSE chemistry video where I'm going to help you to prioritise your revision for AQA chemistry paper 2. These predictions are all based on a detailed analysis of every past paper that there has been for these topics and I'm using the past to try to anticipate the future. The questions I'll be looking to answer are which topics come up the most often, which topics are worth the most marks, are some parts of topics more important to revise than others? And are there some things that haven't come up much recently, which could therefore be slightly more likely to come up in the future? When we look at a graph of the total marks that have been available for each topic for all of the seven papers that there have been, you can see that one topic stands out slightly ahead of the other four, and that is the rate and extent of chemical change. So that means rate of reaction and reversible reaction. And then we've got organic chemistry, chemical analysis, chemistry of the atmosphere and using resources progressively being worth fewer marks as we work our way from left to right. Each of those five topics divides naturally into some subsections and you can see I've got 15 subsections here and when we look at those and the average number of marks available for each of them we can see that the rate of reaction section stands out ahead of all the others by being worth on average 14 marks each year. This section involves a required practical and that practical itself is tested quite frequently. In joint second place is identification of ions, so that's another required practical topic. And we have the Earth's resources, specifically obtaining potable water. Those two worth on average eight marks each each year. And then making up the rest of the top five, we have reversible reactions and dynamic equilibrium and reactions of alkenes and alcohols worth on average seven marks each. In fact, if you take a look at the grade boundaries, both for 2024 and on average across all seven papers, you could see that the total for those five subsections, which is 44 out of 100, would be enough to get you a grade six on average every single year. That's even if you didn't pick up any marks anywhere else on the rest of the paper. This is telling you quite clearly that these are five subsections that you should prioritise. Looking at a graph of those 15 subsections against their total marks across those seven papers, as you would expect, the rate of reaction topic stands out as being worth the most marks. As we work our way to the right, you can see each subsection is worth progressively fewer marks. You can also see how consistently each of these topics was assessed. Sometimes a subsection is not tested very much one year, and that means that it is potentially more likely to be assessed in great depth the following year. You can see this pattern bearing out quite a lot across each of these subsections. And so with that in mind, we could highlight these four subsections here, which were not tested much in 2024, and some of them, in fact, not tested much in 2023 either, making it slightly more likely that they'll be assessed in 2025. Each year, some subsections are worth more marks than others. And so I've classified that as my big hitters on a paper. So working out the top three subsections each year. And by that focus, you can see that the rate of reaction subsection is in the top three, six times out of seven. So standing out as clearly being worth your time to revise with great intensity. After that, there isn't really a standout. You can see that there's quite a lot of subsections three times in the top three or twice in the top three. So really, rate of reaction is the only one that stands out by this methodology. Each of the five topics can be actually reduced down further into subtopics. And when we do that, we find that there are 60 subtopics in total. And I'm showing here the highest value subtopic based on an average number of marks across each paper. And then in first place, you can see that we've got the chromatography required practical worth on average seven marks each year. And then very, very closely behind in total is the calculating rates of reaction skill. So that's either by the mathematical method alone or perhaps being given a graph and working out the gradient of a tangent. Then we've got the disappearing cross with cry practical also from topic six and we've got the dynamic equilibrium specifically looking at how pressure affects a system at equilibrium both of those on average four marks each each year 
This table is showing the nine most important subtopics for your revision. And in fact, if you only picked up the marks from these subtopics, so that's nine out of the 60, you would get 37 marks on average. And that would be enough to get a strong grade five overall, clearly showing that these nine subtopics are really, really important to revise. Each year, Paper 2 assesses some things that are not taught directly as part of the topics. I've split these up into two sections. We've got Math Skills, which on average awards 11 marks each year. And so that's things like calculating percentages, plotting and explaining graphs, working with proportions, surface area to volume ratio, density or general investigative skills such as repeatable and reliable, etc. And also, sometimes things come up that could have been assessed on paper one, but were not. And so this is things like gas volumes, balancing equations, state symbols, atom economy, transition metal properties, percentage by mass and reaction profiles. And so if those skills were not assessed on paper one, it does in fact mean that they could come up as paper two. Not worth many marks, as you can see, a total of five marks each year on average, but that does mean that something not assessed on paper one could come up on paper two. It's worth looking to see if some of those 60 subtopics are tested each year. And when we do that, we can find that four topics, all actually from within topic six, that most important topic, rate and extent of chemical change, they have been assessed every single year. And there are five others that have been assessed six years out of the seven. So this is another way that we can prioritize revision based on those nine subtopics out of 60. It might also be looking at prioritizing which subtopics have not been assessed recently. And so, for instance, I'm showing six subtopics here that were not assessed in 2023 or 2024. And it's worth looking at those top two in particular because they have carried quite a high number of marks and have been assessed quite frequently, just not for the last two years. So those two certainly worth taking a look at for your revision. There are usually two six mark questions on chemistry paper two, and I'm showing here what those have been in 2018 and all the way through to 2024. You can see that there's normally a required practical question and then at least one more, perhaps about life cycle assessments or corrosion and prevention and water treatment. And so with that in mind for 2024, chromatography as a required practical has not been a six mark question for three years. So that that could easily come up. Life cycle assessments hasn't been assessed for two years, so that's another possibility, along with the disappearing cross required practical that's not had a method writing question since 2018. So those required practicals seem highly likely. They do like an equilibrium conditions six mark question. That's not been on for the last two years. And there is another possibility that atmospheric pollutants, because that's not been assessed for a while, that could be a six mark question both where do those pollutants come from and also what problems can those pollutants cause. So in conclusion, I should repeat that these are predictions based on an analysis of the past and there's no guarantees that these patterns will continue into the future. So you should revise everything possible. But as you get closer to the exam, you are going to want to prioritise your revision. And so looking at those subtopics which carry the most marks seems a very sensible place to start, along with those subtopics that have been assessed every single year. To support you with your revision, I've got some GCSE explanation videos about all of these subtopics. There's a links document in the description where you can navigate through all of my videos on the channel. Okay, good luck everybody.